It's on, it's on them. You see? gentlemen you just saw in the beginning of this little film clip were Dan Robinson, Michael Brown, and Brad Featherstone. Cool name. Cool name. Three guys I work with at the publishing company that puts out Today's Trucking, the magazine that I'm the editor of. Brad and Dan work in the video, well actually they are the video department. Michael's a summer student working with Today's Trucking. And last Friday was the first day I brought my sportster into the office. And because we just finished the July issue of our magazine, and because it was so sunny out, and because I could, I asked Dan if I could borrow one of his fancy cameras that he uses to do truck reviews. It's called a GoPro. I wanted to strap it to the tank of my bike to see how well it records a trip down the highway and through town. I've seen other motorcycle videos, and they're all very thrilling, exhilarating rides, and I wanted to make one. I wanted to see if I could make one of them on my Harley. I wasn't sure how it was going to work. I wasn't sure how it was related to trucks. But I, I really wanted to try and do it. And Dan and his pals were all for it. They reassured me it would stick on safely. It's amazing technology, actually. Because uh, they use them on, they've stuck them onto the fenders of trucks that they review. And, and um, they, so they, their, their suction cups are amazingly strong. So they came out to the parking lot and secured the camera to the tank of my bike and cheered me on my way. And away I went. And um, it was interesting. It was, I found out things I didn't expect to find out. Uh, and... Um, uh, it worked very well, um, but like in all research, you never know where it's going to go, do you? And uh, one of the first things I learned um, is that I uh, drive really slowly. <laughs> I mean, I knew I drive slow, and I, but then I thought, to, I said, Dan, maybe we can cover up the speedometer because it's. I drive like I drive like my dad used to drive, and it used to drive us all nuts. I'm the same way in a car. I don't want to get any speeding tickets, and it's more comfortable going slow for the drivers. But I'd feel really dumb if I had an increase in my insurance rates because I want to go a little faster. Um, so bear with me. You don't have to drive fast because you're on a motorcycle. And try if you if you show this video at double speed, it looks a lot faster. I was also reminded that I work in a really industrialized part of Canada. Um, it's like all warehouses and, and little factories and things. And like last week, I was driving up here with Helena. And uh, we we're taking like a back road to my office from the airport, and she's like, "Are you taking me somewhere secretly to murder me and chop up my body?" <laughs> I said she was she was she was, she, was, she was kidding, of course. And I said it would certainly be a good place for it, I suppose. Um, speaking of, one of the first places we passed was the West Toronto Detention Center. Uh, I would put that on my tour of Toronto list if I took people on tours of Toronto, and and. Uh, I would try to get. I would try to drive, but it doesn't look like a jail much. But I would try to drive by just when visiting hours are getting out, because then you get to see the women and children who are inside to visit the old man, and that makes for a colorful uh, bus stop. I'll tell you, uh, memorable. Right across the street from there, it's the ATS Trucking Company where Michael worked for a while, and uh, it's directly across the street from the jail. And I remember driving him to work one day and pointing to both places and saying, "Michael, that's one place I can get you into, and there's another place over there. Well, I can't get you out of, no matter how hard I try." And that's just the kind of funny guy I am. When I started this trip, I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go. I really wanted to plan, I wanted to drive close to some big trucks just for effect because there's some times when I'm driving on the 401 and I'm near the airport and it's 12 lanes of highway and I'm thinking, man, am I small. I could just slip under those wheels. They wouldn't even know. There's cars around me, 747s overhead. I'm not kidding. Racing and there's cars and bikes and trucks, 12 lanes of traffic and here I am just a little little snowflake of a person on a motorcycle and I, I love it it's like it's like being in a pinball machine I just it's a very exhilarating feeling and, 
And a lot of guys don't like riding in the city, but it's something, I don't know, maybe it's my ADHD or something, but it, it's certainly, I look forward to it. It keeps you awake. It's also a bit like skiing, right? I mean, skiing is, uh, downhill skiing is, can be pretty crazy and dangerous, uh, but it, it's thrilling. And, and it's a funny thing, you know, I'll, I'll, if I'm skiing in the wintertime, uh, it's, I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait for the summer to get on my bike. I'm driving down the bike, on the bike in the summertime, I'm thinking, boy, skiing sure would be fun right now. I guess I'm like one of those people who, oh, I know I'm, I'm not like one of those people. I am one, the person. When I'm a tourist in the city, I want to I wanna be a local. When I'm a local, I want to be a tourist. I see people touring the city. I think, geez, that'd be nice to be you know, on, a, on a tour bus somewhere. So anyway, when we first started talking about the camera, I thought about putting it on the helmet. Then I realized all oh, you get is jerking motions because I realized when you're driving down the highway and in the city, your head is moving, your body's moving, you are moving. It's actually quite... It's quite tiring as because you have to keep looking in your mirrors and both mirrors and moving your head around. It would not be fun to watch, I don't think. And also, you might see me looking places that I don't want you to see me looking. I don't know it. And uh, one of the things I've learned as well is that uh, another another thing about me and biking is that I am a creature of habit. I really barely even thought about which way I was going to go, and I found myself heading down the same route that I take home at the end of the day. Down Atwell, on the 427, very same lanes. I changed lanes at the same time. I bet you, if you, you could t probably, if you tracked it, you'd probably see me. I changed gears at the same time, you know? Uh, and, and I even knew I anticipated the change in pavements, the construction zone coming up. Uh, you know, you, you think you're independent minded, and you think you make decisions on a daily basis, but boy, I think, I think my bike could have found its way home if I just let it. So anyway, I realized halfway that I was on my way on the 427. I wasn't having much excitement. And I thought, I want to go where the big trucks are, back on the 401 around Dixie. So I kind of pulled off 427, found my way back through Etobicoke. And um, I mean, if you picture a town called Etobicoke in your mind, this is what you see. Streets that aren't busy, lots of grass, lots of, lots of lawns, lots of big houses. And when I think of, oh my God, when I was growing up, I did not want to grow up and live in the suburbs, but man, oh man, I work in the suburbs and that's my home. I drive around these streets in Toronto. I say, oh, my mother-in-law lives just down the street there. Helena's cousin used to live in that building over there. There's the restaurant Jim Gliona took to me when he offered me a job, you know? I just know it so well. And all of a sudden, I feel like somebody who's been on turf for three or four generations. Oh yeah, you might notice uh, signal lights. You're supposed to see signal lights on my motorcycle. I, 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 a driver, I like to signal. I don't like to be one of those yuppies who don't signal. But on my motorcycle, I can't use signal lights because they're broken. Last year, my bike fell over on its right-hand side and the right front signal cracked off. I could have removed it, but I did remove it, but then I put it back on with duct tape. My nephew, Huey, said, nice, nice fixing job there, Pete. So, I ripped it off, and I ripped off the left one too, so it didn't look dorky. So now I have no signal lights on the front. And I'm trying to find some, but it's hard to find parts for this bike. It's getting old. It's a 1993 Harley Sportster, 883. I've had it for about eight years, but it's uh, uh, it's, it's pretty old, and it's hard to find parts for. Um, I call it Leona. My motorcycle has a name. The name is Leona. It's, it's because my Aunt Leona, she bought it for me. Um, I had many, I had, not many, I had three motorcycles before this one, I guess. But um, my last Yamaha was just dying, it, and and it was even a cop pulled me over once when I was on it. He pulled me over, and I didn't know what I didn't know what I did wrong. He pulls me over and he says, "Buddy, fix your bike, will you? I can smell it from here." So I knew the Yamaha was on its on its last on its last pegs, and and anyway, so I was gonna not have another motorcycle, and then my. My, my aunt left me this $8,500 because she left her all her money in her will to her nephews and nieces, which is very sweet of her. And Helena, my wife, said, you should buy something with the money that Hel Leona would approve of. She didn't say that Helena would approve of, but that's implied, I suppose. So anyway, Leona would definitely approve of a motorcycle. Um, and it was the same time as uh, Simon Blake, uh, the guy I worked with, who has about seven motorcycles himself, found this one at a bike swap and he said Peter I found a motorcycle that's perfect for you and I went over to look at it with him and I agreed it was a it was a re really beautiful small Harley uh, Leona my aunt um, she was everybody's favorite aunt she would definitely approve of this she, uh, 
you know, she, she likes... She likes your nephews and nieces to have fun. She kept our secrets for us, and she gave us money to misbehave with. She used to lend us her car. Uh, she was a great aunt, and um, I think she would definitely approve of me getting uh, Hardy and Davidson with her uh, her inheritance. So I think about her a lot when I write this thing. And uh, it's you know sometimes I, it's sometimes I think I need a bigger bike, um, but you know I think. I think that's in, only in my imagination I need a bigger bike. This one is plenty fast for me. It's plenty fast for anybody, actually. Um, when I first I first got a... Somebody gave me a book about Harleys. That's the thing about buying Harleys. You get a whole culture with it. Somebody gave me a book about Harleys. And there's a line in it that said, when the sportsters were first brought out in the 50s, they were fast and they were sporty and, and kind of cool bikes, Ooh, super cool bikes. And they're the kind of bikes you'd associate with fawns from Happy Days. But now, because there's so many other cooler, faster ones around, they're more associated with Potsy. <laughs> I don't care. It goes fast enough for me. I don't think even I don't. I don't think I should have a faster bike than that. I don't think I should be allowed on a faster bike than that. And I'm not going to go cruising across the continent on it. My my Peter Fonda Easy Rider days are long past. And besides, I can only think if I was going to go be Easy Rider, the only guy who could be Dennis Hopper is uh, my brother Eddie, and he doesn't have a bike. He doesn't even have a watch to throw away either, so neither do I. But anyway, I drive like this old man. I drive with a bike. You know, and I don't drive in, I don't hang out with other guys on motorcycles much. It's something I just don't like doing very much. I, I Whenever I do, I start driving like them. You know, I, I'm a kid, right? So if I keep up with whoever. And um, if I ride in a group, I drive like the group guys. And that's never good. I, I know I'm prone to that. That temptation. If I pull up to an intersection beside somebody and they look over, my my little boy heart is saying, "You have to race. You have to chase them." And I don't want to do that. So I like being by myself, and then I don't feel so bad for going so slowly. I can stop, curve the way I want, whatever. There's this other thing that happens. That I'm I'm not a very good bike. I'm I'm a motorcycle rider. I'm not a motorcycle enthusiast. I don't know much about motorcycles. I'm not a biker because bikers have I don't know what bikers are, but I'm not one. I have a motorcycle. I love it, but I can't say I'm a good biker. You know, there's there's a bike culture that a lot of people get involved in. I, I can't find my way into it for some reason. I, I'm just not very good at it. I'll give you an example. There's this thing called the Friday the 13th Port Dover ride. It's a funny tradition during the summer. Whenever there's a Friday the whenever fri whenever the 13th falls on a Friday, bikers drive to Port Dover from all over. Why? Because they because they can because it sounds like fun, and now it's gone to the point where literally fifty thousand five zero thousand bikes go there on a Friday the thirteenth if it's nice out. What do they do there? Don't know. Walk around. There's maybe there's bands now, and it's like a party. But I mean, you can't drink. Um, you have to behave, and then you leave by the end of the day. And it's so small that you crowd it in, and it just doesn't sound very appealing to me. Uh, and I would be of course lined up beside other bikes that are way better than mine and uh, um, I, I just I don't feel I'm not a very good group motorcyclist uh, the funny thing that happened two years ago I was working in Kitchener Waterloo the day of Friday the 13th I had to go down there to take a picture and I didn't go to Friday the 13th but instead I went the opposite direction from all the motorcycles and I went up to Kitchener to take a photograph and it was a great day it was a beautiful ride I was coming back at the end of the day and the 401 eastbound was blocked and I thought maybe I'll take a detour and go down highway 6 south and then across the Gardner I, of course on my motorcycle so I'm not in a hurry to get home that's the funny thing about being a motorcycle isn't it you kind of speed up because you want to get there fast and when you get there and you want to get back on your bike and drive some more anyway that's weird but it's, um, it's any thrills like that you want to get over with and you want to do it again so I bet anyway I was, I was not in a hurry to get home so I went down highway 6 south and I noticed a couple of bikes coming up towards me. And you know bikes do that thing. And I don't know what it means. I don't know what it doesn't mean. But bikes do this thing where bikers wave to each other. Or they flip their hand up. Or they nod. Or they just they glance like cool guys. And uh, I do it. If somebody waves to me, I'll wave back. Sure. So I'm going down the highway, Highway 6. And guys pass me and flip their little hand up. And I greet them. And next guy comes by and I greet him. And then after about 120 motorcycles flipping their little hand, I realize I'm doing this thousands of times they're only doing it once so then I stopped that's why I stopped 
So uh, another time, not just that, I'm not a good biker. Yeah, I re, you know, these are the important things you think about when you're driving down the highway. You're thinking, you're not thinking about, you're not thinking about freedom and independence and 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 anarchy and and craziness. You're not thinking about, uh, uh, well, sometimes you think about mortality. Actually, you think about mortality more than you might think. You think about mortality because it's it's near at hand. But lofty thoughts, eh, I don't know. Um, my, my thoughts are more like, I wonder what flipping up the hand means. Does it mean there's a cop coming or does it mean there's not a cop coming? Does it mean you're fine and that you're cool or that you're not fine and cool? Anyway, that's the kind of thing, that big, big issues I think about. And then sometimes I think about mortality and how easy it would be to find out all the mysteries of life in one, one bad move and all your questions would be answered. But anyway, I'm not going to go to the Friday the por Friday 13th in Port Dover. It just doesn't, it doesn't, I don't have that kind of attitude towards it, you know, and I, I don't know that much about bikes. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not a, not a collector. Uh, I don't, I don't spoil my bike and I don't actually clean it that much and people give me heck for that. They've been, st I've been stopped and said, why don't you wash your motorcycle? I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't work for me. I think it's more casual about it. Um, and then, you know, I've, it's, sometimes my kids come on with me. Nice, my, my three kids have all learned how to ride bikes. And uh, a couple of years ago, my son Michael and I went up to the cottage on the bike, up to 400. And um, it was a very nice sunny day. He was 89 or something. And it was funny because we got there and uh, he pulls off his helmet and he says, Dad, you know, I think you're the only motorcycle driver who gets passed by tractor trailers. <laughs> and... Uh, they, and he, another lesson that day too is we, the next day we were coming back from Toronto and uh, to Toronto rather uh, he, we had to get back early he had some kind of church function that he was supposed to go to and um, had to get back by 9 so we're heading down the highway real early in the morning and all of a sudden I find out I'm running out of gas and uh, even the reserve tank ran out and there we're stuck and um, th it was an interesting morning because we just it was a nice sunny day and we're inside of the highway and I didn't even think about it. I just said, Michael, okay, Michael, we have to hit right now. It was not anything we'd ever talked about. You don't tell your kids about hitchhiking. You don't say how to do it or how not to do it. You live in the city, it never occurs to you. And you don't see hitchhikers like you used to. But the way I grew up was like so, it was in our blood. We just stuck our thumb out. So Michael and I stuck our thumbs out. We got a, really, got a ride with a really nice woman who t told us about hitchhiking around. And, and then, and then another truck driver brought us back to the bike later. And I think Michael was kind of a little freaked out because, you know, in school and everywhere else, people were saying, don't ever get in the car with a stranger and don't talk to strangers. And here's his dad telling him, here, get in the car with a stranger. Get in the car with a stranger. See what happens. So anyway, afterwards, we got back to, get back to the bike. And just before we get started, he said, you know, you can go, Dad, I was thinking, you can go a long way with that hitchhiking thing, can't you? And, you, you know, when I first got the bike, it has a small wind, windscreen on, and it, I took that off a couple of years ago because I, I think this bike looks way more streamlined without it. Um, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit wussy with this windscreen on it, and you know, I'm not. Well, actually, the fact is, this Hardy Sportster 883 is the smallest bike Hardy makes, and uh, it's a fair and a not, not. Uh, not a surprising thing to say that actually it's been known as a girl's bike or a woman's bike. It belonged with Frank Black, the guy who sold it to me. He is a car hardy mechanic in Parkdale near my house, and a typical biker guy, and uh, he probably could build one from scratch. And this belonged to his girlfriend. And uh, it was funny one time, uh, after I had it a little while, I was never aware of that. I didn't know that much about what bike was for who, which group. But uh, I had to go to this drugstore, pick up a prescription or something. And I pulled into the drugstore parking lot and there were actually two guys standing outside smoking drugs. <laughs> and they, I pulled up beside them. And the one guy said, oh look, it's the ladies Harley. And he, I, he, I had a full visor on, right? And, uh, and the other guy said, oh yeah, right. And I turned, it, got off the bike, I pulled off my visor, and pulled off my, my mask. And uh, the guy said, oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. First one called me Sir. <laughs> he says, Sir, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, you're not, you're Peter Fonda. Look, you know who Peter Fonda is. And I thought, that's cool that he knows who Peter Fonda is for kid at his age. And he called me Sir. <laughs> then another time, I met a guy in Japan. I was in Japan with a bunch of other magazine editors. And one of them was a tow truck editor from New York. 
and a tough guy. He was he was a, he was a former bike gang member. I think it might have been a Hell's Angel even. T- tough New York accent. He's from Brooklyn. He's telling me about biker stories and biker parties and what a tight bond they had. He was a serious motorcycle gang member, but retired and now editing a magazine. <laughs> and uh, after we got back to North America, we were exchanging emails and, you know, saying we should drive up here and see Toronto and you take a cruise along New York. You'd love it. Finally, I sent him a picture of me on my motorcycle that was taken from across the street and I'm sitting there on my with my black t-shirt and black jeans and he writes back, oh, I see your wife has a motorcycle too. And then um, actually the last email, that was the last I heard from him, <laughs> or last he heard from me. So... Anyway, I, my wife, uh, Helen, likes my bike. That's good enough for me. She doesn't want a new one. She doesn't want hers. She doesn't want her own. She doesn't ever have any desire to drive, as far as I can tell. And, uh, you know, I, sometimes I'd like to take go for a ride in one of those big cruisers to see what she'd like. But I, it doesn't, I don't know. It's just something that doesn't seem to suit us. She's nice and slender, and motorcycle's nice and slender, and this one suits her. Um, and, you know, these big, heavy bikes with the radios and the air conditioning, and, you know, they're heavy and they're hard to back up, and I don't think we want one of those, and it doesn't suit my wife, or me, I think. And Helen has, has you know, she belongs in a, a sports store, I think. So let me uh, stereotype more. <clears throat> anyway, I was going, um, if I could stereotype more, I don't think I could. I think my wife, even though she has a master's degree in science from the University of Toronto, very deep, not very deep down, rather, she's a blonde biker chick. And uh, if she ever hears this, I guess um, I might get beat up by a blonde biker chick. <laughs> anyway, so my test drive took me through Etobicoke, more Etobicoke, more industrialized area. I was not having much success. I wanted some dramatic shots up beside, with me and up beside some big trucks, but it just wasn't working that way. I wanted to be cool and dangerous and look exciting, but it just didn't work that way. But that's okay with me because, in fact, I'll tell you, a couple of years ago, I was at a magazine conference and I, I ran into a woman I went to university with. And I hadn't seen her for 20 years. She said, what are you doing now? And I... I said, oh, you know, I work for a magazine, and uh, I'm the editor, and I love it. I travel a lot, and uh, and I was on my motorcycle at the time. And she said, she was driving a motorcycle, and I, yeah, I said, I'm driving a motorcycle, and I, uh, you know, I, I write big trucks, and I write magazine stories, and, and uh, it's pretty exciting work. And she said, yeah, it does sound like a good job. I'm glad you like it. And we started talking about what my life was like with my kids learning the motorcycle, my kids having a PTA meeting, and 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 going over to my mother-in-law's house and making sure that making sure that that the cat litter was taken care of, and making sure that um, you know we all worked and had holidays, and and talking more about my kids. And she said, you know, Peter, remember back when you were in university, you know that. Every girl in their class had you pegged as Mr. Dad with picket fences. And I was like, oh, I broke it. I was like, I thought I was a cool guy with a black leather jacket. I had long hair. And they had me pegged as a guy with picket fences. And anyway, you get my point. I think, um, I think turning this camera on my motorcycle is, because like <laughs> this, <laughs> And his raising speeds and his hair raising turns. It's been like turning a camera on myself, and it's been really interesting, really an interesting ride. This has been an interesting ride. Seeing the, seeing me through the, the eyes of the camera as I putter around Etobicoke on this old motorcycle. So anyway, I've been out about half an hour, way too long. Now I get to get back to work. I got to get some work done before I get back on my bike and go home. I can do my chores. And, Clean up the kitty litter, have supper, maybe maybe watch a movie and maybe be in bed by 10. There's lots of stuff to do tomorrow. But before I do that, I'll put this on YouTube just to show you what life is like for a real biker. I'm going to pass by a minivan. <laughs> 